Joining us now is Ojinika Ojiokwe with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jinix. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Abadi. How are you this morning? Good. <laughs> Great. Good morning, Rufai. How morning, are you this morning? Ocean. It's a new beginning, right? Mm -hmm. We're missing Ayomi Day. Yeah. Well, all right. Let's begin what's trending. Well, it's a new dawn for the governor of Oshun State, Ademola Adeleke, as he continues his work in the state after being reinstated as governor by a court of appeal last week. Adeleke on Tuesday attended the unveiling of the Nigeria Immigration Service Passport Office in Elisha on invitation by the Minister of Interior, Rauf Arigbishola. Adeleke, while speaking during the ceremony, proclaimed a new executive order to protect Arigbishola who is said to have been at loggerheads with the state's former governor, Adegboyega Oyetola, from being chased out of the state. Both men were seen showing off their dance moves during the ceremony in display of their union. <laughs> Senate, dancing governor now. That's what I gave, I gave him. Dr. Bati, you both interviewed him recently, and he did very uh, yes, well. Yes, but I mean, there's more to that <laughs> yes. dancing. Yeah. Uh, it's more about his subtext. Mm -hmm. And his subtext, in my view, is as follows. Uh, it's as follows. You recall that uh, uh, Governor um, uh, Baba Kabiru, Baba Kabiru, what's his name? Ogbeni. Ogbeni As uh, governor of Ocean State, when he left, uh, he wasn't on good terms with his successor. Yeah, that's what I said. Who I administered mean. chief mm -hmm. of staff, uh, former governor Adigboyega Uyetola. And for that period, each time uh, Adigboyega Shola went back to Ocean, the issue was always either, oh, he came to attack... Uh, uh, government officials in Oshun with uh, immigration officials, or his own camp will claim that, you know, he was uh, attacked by persons loyal to Governor Yetola. So it was a very difficult period for him as a former governor. There was no love lost between them. And there was, uh, you know, there are persons in Oshun State who also believe that Governor Yetola losing the election to Governor Adeleke had the hand of... Uh, uh, you know, former Governor Rauf Aregbeshola, now Minister Aregbeshola, uh, in it. But now it's a new dispensation in uh, Ocean State. You now find Governor Ademola Adeleke, who, has, who won the election on July 16, who was removed by the tribunal, and who has now been reinstated by the Court of Appeal, and who has been told by the APC and uh, former Governor Yetola that the matter will go all the way to the uh, Supreme Court. So this is a case of the enemy of, of my enemy is it's my, my friend. friend. So you find uh, former Governor Aregbe Shola making the equivalent of a triumphant uh, return, entry into uh, Ocean State. And the first thing that uh, Governor Adeleke did was first to prostrate to him, two, to tell him that in fact, the people of Ocean State are very proud of his achievements yeah. as a federal minister, three, that he, Adeleke, is completing projects initiating, initiated by uh, Aregbe Shola as governor, and that Aregbe Shola will be invited to commission some of those uh, projects. So you see that all of that is political gesture, you know, uh, to say, well, Oyetola may not like you, but we like you. And they capped it up with dancing yes, steps yes. Uh, with uh, Governor Adeleke uh, dancing. He says he likes to dance. He enjoys dancing. Okay, he's the father of yeah. B-Red, he's the father of uh, Shino Rambo. He said in the U.S. he won a lot of prizes <laughs> for dancing competition. So you see uh, both uh, Baba B-Red and Baba Kabiru, you know, dancing there. But the meaning of it all is in the subtext. Yes, absolutely. However, the other point made by Aregbe Shola there is that the uh, uh, Ministry of Interior, through the immigration, uh, the Nigerian immigration, is opening offices, passport offices across Nigeria to ensure that Nigerians, you know, don't have to wait for a long time to renew their passports or get new passports. And I think that that is important because many Nigerians go through a lot of stress and he has chosen his own uh, state 
Ocean State. He also included Elisha. He included uh, Canada, U.S., and all that. I guess Nigerians will be happy that, look, it will be easier to get uh, Nigerian passports. But it should not just be a Lemon Shaw and uh, Elisha and Canada and U.S. This should go round because this is about citizenship. This is oh. about identity. That's what the downstairs, I think, well, that would be entertaining. I know. Well, Rufa, you know he said he's never going to stop dancing because yes, he, he wanted to be an entertainer his whole life. And, yeah, I mean, know, I mean, it's nice to see. I mean, only recently we saw him drumming, so he yeah, added he was, a new he, skill he to was, his No, well, he drums, <laughs> he dances and all of that. But yeah. like he said uh, the last time we interviewed, it doesn't take his mind off the work. Yeah. Uh, but obviously we all know that when the interests of politicians are aligned, they dance together. I mean, we all remember, even leading up to the governorship election, the fight between Arek Beshola and Bola Ahmed Tinubu. We all know. And by extension, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the president-elect, you know, his camp supporting Oyetola. And now that this has happened, that it looks as though that somebody that um, uh, Arek Beshola is supporting is in there, like Adeleke, they can coalesce and do things together. But the most important thing I keep saying is, how does all of this political alignment work for the people of Osho. Right. That's the most important thing, because if government is not working for the people, then it's no government at all. And there have been a lot of projects out there in Elisha, and Ralph for is from Elisha. So there's even a project out there in Elisha. One of the questions I wanted to ask him when he was there that I couldn't ask him was about the University of Elisha project that you know, was started, how he's going to complete it, and all of that. But let's see how all of this pans out. But most importantly, it's the long-suffering people of Osho. I want their lives to be better. Well said, Rafai. We'll take another story. On Tuesday, controversial singer Habib Okikiola, popularly known as Portable, had a confrontation with the Nigerian police after they stormed his wine bar, claiming that he had been petitioned at their station, but without revealing what it was about. The singer, however, resisted arrest, insisting that he should have been invited and that he's a federal government liability. Portable also said that he is a superstar and claimed to be working with the APC, and so he can't be arrested without cause. Let's take a look. Why are you here? Yes, from you. And then you come in and I will come to your office. Oh, my manager will come. I have manager. Okay. I have promoter. Yes. Are you giving us a No, don't tell me. Don't you can't kill myself. Oh, yeah, what did I do? What's in that competition? Portable. Portable. Kill our new petition. No, don't tell me this one I'm doing. You don't help me. I'm, I'm a superstar. I'm a celebrity. Show me your ID card. Show me your ID card. Show me your ID card. Show me Nobody is above them. Absolutely. Uh, Zazu, portable. <laughs> While it is zen in his bar, <laughs> she will know that it's not above the law. Anybody can be invited by the police. Mm -hmm. The police can investigate. But it's also right to have asked the policemen to say, identify yourselves. And to have also asked them what is his offense. Instead of just coming to his bar, disrupting the place and say, you know, you are wanted at the station. The policemen, there are issues with regard to them in terms of professionalism. And we know that the Nigerian police is not the most professional of a law enforcement agency that we have in Nigeria. There's Azuze uh, telling people I'm um, government liability. Yeah, my understanding of that in Yoruba 
is to say uh, there's something they call Omo Joba. Omo Joba. Omo Joba. <laughs> you know what it means? <laughs> when people say they are Omo Joba, they say government is responsible for them. And why does he say it's a government liability? Which government? The same government that all of us are under. You know, he, he clarified it. He said, uh, we own Nigeria now. And that he works for Tinubu. Okay. I hope, I hope there are not too many people in this country following the elections in, in February, March, who are under such sort of delusions. Ah, they are. That with the politics of proximity, if your kinsman or somebody you are associated with is president of Nigeria, then that places you above the laws of Nigeria. That would be a wrong thing to assume. So if the police have an issue with... Uh, you know, portable, the musician, uh, they should go, they should just invite him properly, and he has an obligation to go there. I've seen a statement by the police saying they have invited him five times, five times yeah. and that he has refused to show up. No. <laughs> he keeps defending himself, saying, I'm a celebrity, I'm a superstar. No, no there's no such defense in law. You don't go to a police station or a court of law or to an agency and you say, I'm a celebrity, I'm a superstar. What is the meaning of that? That means absolutely nothing. Right. That's your business. Mm -hmm. Okay? You are not above the law. If you have an issue, you go there and explain yourself. So uh, if uh, Portable has a story to tell, he's entitled under the laws of Nigeria to tell his own side of the story. It's called fair hearing. I think Section 36 of the 1999 Constitution guarantees you the right to fair hearing. Even in legal proceedings, there's something they call audio atram patam. So if he's invited, go there, state your own side of the story. That's what is available to him. Not that he's a celebrity, he's a superstar. <laughs> right. Which is a celebrity, which superstar. All right. What's the meaning of what you just, he said? Uh, so well, let me now tell you the subtext. When yes. I was here on my job, yeah. we're a long way well. <laughs> What does very long way man? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, but the truth is, you know, you know the people they call Omar Job are people that are mentally deranged on the streets okay. and they say it's the responsibility of the states to oh, take care okay. of them. So when you say Omar Job, it's a deeper connotation with a long way. But I think let's get down to the matter. And apart from all the theatrics, I'm Zazu, I'm a Babu, I live in the zoo, Zazu, and all of that. Truth has to be told. Told. There are petitions written against him. As a law abiding citizen, when they write a petition, you have a right, you know, to your counsel to be able to talk about the petition and look at it back and forth. Right. But also what I don't like is the fact that the police, you know, will come and damage property. And you see, when the matter is reported, and thank God for cameras in this aspect, you will hardly see the damage the police cause. It is always the reaction of the other person that you see. And that's why we need to be very careful in this country. And that's why I've constantly called for police reforms. Yes. Secondly, he has no right to be able to say, oh, I work for this, I work for the president-elect, blah, 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 and all of that. Uh, you know, Akoi Tinobu was trending yesterday. You know, he's this famous Langakoi, you know, uh, I'm part of this and all of that. You have no right to say that. All right. Uh, that is inconsequential in the case. But, to answer Dr. Bati, in fact, there is a delusion called the propinquity delusion. And it is rife in this country. And the truth is, there are a lot of people that think like portable. And that's a sad reality. The fact that, oh, somebody from my race, my tribe is president-elect. Oh, that means I can get away with a lot. There are people that actually think like that. But we must also have a country that says that the system is for all. And whoever is elected becomes president for all. Because apart from even Portable, there are people that have done it prior to this time. So we should be careful about that. I'm sure Portable, in the end of that video, he said he's chased the police officers away, which I know the case will not go away. I'm sure he'll finally go there and settle things out. But it's got no right to say he's a celebrity. He should go there, answer the petition, whatever it is. And they do not have the right to come and disrupt his property.
person. It's as simple as that. Right. What do you need that? What? Even you, you are a celebrity. Yes, sir. No. A superstar. He's a superstar, right? Yes. <laughs> no, superstar. But, but, but he says it. <laughs> but he says it boldly. He tells you, Mono, go. I have glory. <laughs> Rufai. I got money. Almighty Rufai, superstar. Don't talk about it. Almighty Rufai, no, 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 superstar. I'm just a What is the Almighty? God is Almighty. Who are you? I'm just a struggling brother. Well, all right. We shall take another story. Professor Nena Oti, the current vice chancellor of the Federal University of Technology in Owere, Imo State, received a heroic welcome on Tuesday at the school after she had been hailed for her courage in standing her ground to insist that the people's votes must count during the just concluded gubernatorial and House of Assembly elections. Dr. Oti was a returning officer of the Independent National Electoral Commission for the IBS state governorship election. The accomplished scholar is reported to have refused to be procured to cause chaos in Abia State during the elections. I am Professor Mrs. Nena N. Oti, me, Ibewo, from Afibo, Ebony State. I have spent the better part of my adult life in pursuit of the high ideals of good governance, which includes, but are not limited to the following, the rule of law, transparency, accountability, inclusiveness. I shall stand squarely, unapologetically, on these principles. Therefore, the people's voice and mandate shall stand. The pastor in me and the mother in me also will not permit me to do anything that will adversely affect the future of our children. I shall do right by God and by man. Dr. Nena was welcomed by the staff and students of FUTU. Some were chanting songs, others holding banners with the inscription, Welcome back, Nena Oti, heroine of Nigerian democracy. Let's take a look. <laughs> We need women like this, more women like this. I know what you would say. She should be on the honors list, correct? <laughs> yes, <I agree laughs> to be receiving a merit yeah, award. And then, of course, this, yeah. it's good you started with the gender point. Yes. There are many people who say, look, women are better leaders, mm -hmm. better managers. We saw it during COVID when we sat here and we were praising Jacinta and then and other Absolutely. you know, uh, female presidents across the world. But this is in the context of the election. And the simple morality of it is that when you do well, the people will press you. We're saying in many states, the elections were met with a graveyard of the of, uh, silence of the graveyard. But in uh, Abia State, it was an uh, exception where the people trooped to the streets to celebrate the victory of the Labour candidate, uh, 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 Labour Party candidate Alex Oti. And then now we have a story saying. When Professor, you said uh, Dr. Nenauti, no, she's Professor, Professor Nenauti, Professor of Soil Science and Vice Chancellor of the Federal University of Technology. So she went back to her own school and she was welcomed. Not many Vice Chancellors are popular, but she is popular with the students. The only other Vice Chancellor that I remember in recent memory who was celebrated like this was uh, maybe Professor Wande Abimbola, who was reputed for being popular with the students, every time he came up, the students would start singing, ba ba la wo mo wa be be Anyway, in our own case, she was being commended for her integrity, for holding her space, for saying she would not be used uh, to manipulate elections. 
So congratulations to her. Before now, one gentleman called Steve, in fact, uh, volunteered to give her a Prado Jeep uh, to commend her. So when you do well in the public space, the people we know, every one of us, were perpetually uh, taking a public uh, examination. Previously, she was vilified in the same university. When under her watch, Isa and Tami was given professorship. And people said that didn't follow due process. But that's another matter. In terms of election, integrity matters. Well, let's end what's trending today by joining President Muhammad Buhari, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Baji Abiyamila, the Governor of Lagos State, Babajide Sonwolu, and a host of others in wishing Nigeria's President-elect, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, a happy 71st birthday. Tinubu's supporters have been flooding social media with congratulatory messages. Some have even written songs to celebrate his new age. One of them is Jennifer Serrano. According to her, it will be the first out of nine birthdays that Tinubu would spend as president. Let's take a look. To celebrate you on the special occasion of your 71st birthday, the first out of nine birthdays you will spend as president of Nigeria. Happy birthday, sir. Ride on Bola, she wants you. We love you, Bola, she wants you. Ride on Bola, she wants you. We love you, Bola, she wants you. We love you now. We love you always. Ride on Bola, she wants you. You be father. Ride on Bola, she wants you. We love you, Bola, she wants you. Ride on Bola, she wants you. We love you, Bola, she wants you. We love you now. One nation, one people. Jagaba says so. One nation, one people. Jagaba says so. One nation, one people. Jagaban says so. I thought that was a beautiful rendition it's by Jennifer. Uh, I mean, you didn't I complete it. You too, you want to sing, we love you. <laughs> nah, Dr. Bati, I was singing, was singing now. Okay. <laughs> Lala, me to learn. What can I say? Happy birthday to Nigeria's president-elect, Bola mm. Ahmed Tinubu Rufai. <laughs> I mean, happy birthday to him. A lot of his supporters yeah. are saying a very big happy birthday to him. Tons of people out there saying happy birthday to him, happy birthday to him. So I think it's just in the season, you know. People will write songs, they'll do all sorts and everything. But if I can give him one advice, he is president-elect. That's why everybody is gravitating towards him. He should be weary of people because people only go where the mango is very ripe to suck. Okay. He should bring closer to him people that can tell the truth to him, not praise singers everywhere. <laughs> because now that is president-elect, we have a lot of them. You should be careful. Have you ever seen the crown of a Yoruba king? Yes, it normally I has two uh, birds at the top. Mm -hmm. Do you know why it has two birds? Ayeloria. Okay. All right, Dr. That's Bati, a lot of praise singers. What can uh, we say? Failure is an orphan. Success is like a nectar, you know, that attracts everybody. Yes. It's like honey. Yeah. That is the point that is being uh, made. But that lady singing, we love you, I show you, we love you. I hope uh, you show that uh, video to Senator Remy Tinubu, uh, <laughs> so that uh, she can be on her guard. Uh, because uh, so many people will love her husband now. And uh, well, she should uh, pay attention. But I have no doubts that she's paying attention. Uh, because I was waiting for you to, to say, we love you as you are you. Why me, Dr. Batty? Uh, no, you started was singing too. I, was, I, was, I, was, I like the song. It was, it was, it was cute. It was yeah. really, really happy, cute. Happy birthday to the president. I'm not a praise singer, unfortunately. <laughs> well, thank you both you for your happy. great Let analysis. You as always, again, happy birthday to the president-elect. Well, that's all I have for you on What's Trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.